Romania has a huge problem with the number of dogs currently living on the streets. Unwanted and without a mass neuter program in place, these animals live in terrible conditions, constantly searching for food and shelter and trying to avoid capture. Those who are captured by government-affiliated dog catchers face a more disturbing fate. They are taken to a public pound where they are imprisoned for two to three weeks in desperate conditions. If they're not claimed in this time, they are destroyed. I don't want to leave this one behind. But there is some hope. A small number of animals are saved by rescue centres where they are kept safe, fed and loved until they are adopted. I'm Rosie Marcel and I travel with UK animal charity The Pack Project to Brashov, Romania to see what can be done to improve the situation for these animals. With the help of such organisations, these dogs can have the loving family life they all deserve. In this film, we'll see how the team and volunteers at the rescue centres are battling against extreme winter conditions, a lack of resources and funding, and a culture without a focus on animal welfare. I'm in Brashov, central Romania, approximately 185 kilometres north of Bucharest, where I'm going to meet the UK animal charity, The Pack Project, as they visit their partner rescue centre here. They will be assessing which dogs are suitable for UK adoption at Care for Dogs Romania. We'll be spending three days with Delia Batea and her team as they care for around 200 dogs waiting to be rehomed. A lack of rehoming culture for mixed breed dogs in Romania means the only chance for these animals is adoption to other European countries, such as the UK, France and Germany. The reason why I wanted to do something is because I wanted some change. We're a non-profit organization that takes care of stray dogs. Uh, we often rescue dogs from uh, Romanian public shelters uh, when they're on kill lists. Our job is to save their lives actually. Uh, we want to uh, make sure that uh, after they come to us, they become more confident, they get all the um, food that they need, they get the treatments, they get vaccinated, spayed, um, dewormed, defleed, and then uh, through our partners and ourselves, we search for the best adoptions. So I set up the charity uh, in August 2017 to help with the stray dog population in Romania. It was clear from our first visit that Delia and her team were awesome. Uh, they got really good protocols, really good ways of cleaning, caring for the dogs, the way they treat the dogs is fantastic. The work they want to put in, the things they want to change about the culture in their country towards dogs, we're blown away really, and that's why we want to partner with her. I first came into contact with Laura and the Pat Project when I came across their page on Instagram. I saw what they were doing and I knew I had to help. When they told me about the situation for street dogs here, I had to come and witness it for myself. The centre is a purpose-built facility on old farmland. At the front of the centre is the veterinary clinic and quarantine area. The main body of the centre is made up of runs on either side, where the majority of the dogs who are up for adoption are housed. There's also an exercise area for assessment and training purposes. And a special enclosure at the rear of the property for those dogs deemed currently unsuitable for adoption. I'm really, really impressed with it, I have to say, as, as far as a rescue centre goes, I think it's, it's pretty good. They all seem pretty healthy and pretty happy, and they're all gorgeous, and I'm surprised that they don't have homes. We have around 600,000 stray dogs uh, in Romania at this point. This problem we've had since the Ceausescu period, so for about 30 years, it's actually 40 if I think about it, they've started demolishing houses and building apartment blocks instead, and because of that, everybody who had a dog inside their garden let the dog on the streets and they started multiplying out of control until it became a very big problem. As the years went on and the living conditions for the people became more difficult, the welfare of these animals was simply forgotten. Even today, some dogs have their noses burnt by their owners when being abandoned, as it is believed to bring them good luck on the streets. It is also believed in certain religious communities that a neuter program is not the natural order of things and against God's will. So these dogs and other animals are reported to the dog catchers for removal. The rescue centers face a lot of resistance from the local communities as they do all they can to save the animals. 
Occasionally, though, some get the luck they deserve and end up here instead. Okay, so we found this dog. Actually, it was posted on Facebook. I think this around midnight. The little help. She's heavy. <laughs> okay, I'll get the box. I don't think that she can see. She's about 10, 11 years old. Maybe even more. You see how bad the teeth are? She's had puppies, for sure. I was thinking she was used, she was used, used in a puppy in, mill. Yeah. How can somebody just leave her here? Pedigree breed dogs have become more popular in Romania and can be very sought after compared to the mixed breed street dogs. Her living conditions have left her extremely frightened, with a fever and a long list of health issues that Delia and her team will quickly assess. Overnight, these puppies were also left outside. Because of the weather conditions, they would certainly have perished had Delia not brought them inside. It's early December, and already the temperatures are reaching minus five. There's frost on the ground, and the dog's food and water is at risk of freezing. The team has their work cut out, simply cleaning and maintaining all of the runs. The winter in Romania is really cold, and the summers are really hot, so it's really tough for the dogs. And even though they're at a rescue centre, they're still technically outside, even though there is roofs to cover them from the elements. So dogs living on the streets have it really, really tough. Outside, in the food storage area, the cold weather has caused more problems for the team. The main water supply line has frozen, meaning that until it's thawed, no water can be used to clean the runs or be given as drinking water. I hope it's only frozen on here, on the outside, because if it's frozen underground, there is nothing we can do, really. After an hour, the team has running water again, so their cleaning duties can begin and the dogs can have a drink. This is our only solution for now, to heat the pipes, but I'm very happy it worked. Very, very happy. The next day, we face the most difficult part of our trip, a visit to the public pound. Earlier in the week, due to a space becoming available at the rescue centre, Laura from the Pack Project took the short trip to Codlia with the unenviable task of choosing one dog to be saved. Today, we're going to collect him. Once we're there, though, we will be faced with dozens of other dogs that aren't as lucky. We are about to go into the pound uh, here and take a look at the dogs. There is one that's been put aside for us, that's been reserved for us today to be able to take away. Usually, Laura and her team are able to take away a lot more but we have no space. So we're gonna take a look and, and, uh, and see what the conditions are like here. The public pounds are set up by government officials who are paid to capture the street dogs, hold them for two to three weeks, and if they're not claimed as a pet, euthanize them. It's impossible to ignore the helpless plight of all these dogs, some barely a few weeks old. As we load one dog into the van, I find it so hard to leave these animals knowing what is going to happen to them. I don't want to leave this one behind. The only way is to get more adopted from the rescue centre to make space. But he won't be here then. I mean, they, I know they all need homes, but these two. It was at this point that Delia gave us some amazing news. As some of her dogs were being rehomed soon, it was possible for three more dogs to be saved. I've gotten very attached to two dogs here. Oh, <laughs> And lovely Delia, even though she doesn't have room, has agreed to reserve these two beautiful girls so they are safe, which is amazing. And another brindle dog up there that you liked. Um, so that's th three dogs. We're taking away, well, we're not going to take away four today. We're taking one and then we're going to take another three in a week or so, yeah. which is amazing. They're safe. Although many are still being left behind, the journey back to the rescue centre was a little better knowing that more lives had been saved. You know, our UK dogs have no idea how lucky they are because these dogs have lost hope and they're gonna, they're gonna get put to sleep if they don't get adopted. And we're talking weeks. This is the dog we saved today from the pound. He's gorgeous, he's been neutered, he's petrified, but he's safe. He's, uh, he's safe now at Delia's. So I've been here for a couple of days and you know the work that's being done is absolutely fantastic. It's great work, but it's it's not enough. It's just not enough. We have to do more, we have to care more, and, and we can't do that without your help. 
and that's why I'm here to ask for your help. These dogs are systematically being shut down and put to sleep in, in weeks. They are healthy dogs, they are checked for all diseases, they have EU passports, they're just dogs that need homes, you know, and you can help. It's a really easy process to adopt a dog from the Pack Project or from, you know, Delia's Rescue here. It's really simple to donate, just go online, go to the Pack Project, go to Facebook, any kind of donation is welcome. And if you feel that you can do more than that, then please adopt a dog because they're desperate and they are beautiful. I want people in England to, first of all, adopt the, the dogs that we have uh, promoted through Pack Project. And the second thing I wanted them to do is to donate uh, through the Pack Project because they're helping directly us. A dog has so much to give and they are so selfless animals and their family members see beyond the pictures, see beyond the stories and open your heart and adopt a shelter animal because you would be rescuing actually two lives. You would be rescuing the life of the animal that you just adopted and the life of the next one that we're going to save. It's only with the combined hard work and determination of the rescue centres and charities that the lives of these dogs can change forever.